I got you with another intro to Code Igniter 4 um, episode here. Today we're going to look at services. What are they? Why would you want to use them? And how you can use them in your code and to override core functionality. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at our little example here, right? I've got a little class right here, very simple class, but it does a couple things for us. It takes a greeting and stores that as part of the class. So that way we can see if we have the same class or a different class, you know, we can keep them separated and know for sure, right? And then just has one simple function. So let's do this real quick. As you can see, I'm running it here just through uh, our, our normal serve command, which you can see, uh, you can't see. Oh, here we go. Which you can see right here, PHP Spark serve. That's all we need to do there, all right? So we don't want to return the default message. What we want to do here is to get, to have a greeter, um, Yep, new greetings, and he's going to say hello to everybody that walks in the door. So the first person through the door is going to be John. There we go. Hello, John. I, he probably could have used some punctuation there, don't you think? All right, it would be nice. There you go, punctuation. Now let's pretend that this was actually a useful class, because obviously it's not really, but let's pretend that, right? I mean, being greeted is nice, especially nowadays when you you know, kind of quarantined and you can't go out and see each other. So being greeted is nice and all, but let's pretend this is actually a really useful class and you might want to use it in multiple places. Well, if you want to use it in multiple places, you could do this every time. And that's fine with something simple like this, right? Let's say you've got three or four or five different um, dependencies that you need to add to this class. Well, that's kind of a pain in the butt to create every single time, right? So we don't want to do that. We want to just do that once in one simple place that we can define that class and its dependencies, right? And so what we do is we come here to what's called services. And if we look in app, uh, app config services, you'll see we have a default skeleton set up for you with something that you can even copy and paste into your own command, right? So we're going to call this greeter. Oops. Greeter and we have a string with the greeting as required. Oops. We gotta keep the key. And what what this will do is to return the greetings app with our greeting. Okay. Now, what services do, like I said, they allow you to have one simple place, one method that's easy to read, no magic behind the scenes, to be able to follow and to recreate this, okay? So in this case, we've added, we've said that, oops, we've said that, hey, I would like to always pass in the greeting. I'd like to customize this every time that I get it, right? Um, and so we ignore this for now. We'll get back to that in a second. And so we pass in the greeting, it returns a new class. Obviously, this is a simple case. It can get much more complex, and that's when it's more handy, right? Um, but in this case, we got a real simple class, just for examples today. And so now, if I were to do here, instead, oops, wrong class, I'll come back here, and our greeter is now, we're going to use the service helper. Um, whoops. And give it the name of the greet, along with what we want to say. Any parameters we have to pass, we can pass through there. Uh, and as you can see, since it shows dot 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 params, that means you can use uh, PHP 7's new features, or you can just you know do uh, param2, so like that, and not have to put them in an array, and it takes care of that for you. So what this does is this says, hey, go find me the service name greeter, which is matches the name that we call that method there, right? Go find me the service name greeter. Give me an instance of that. In this case, I want to say hello. So let's make sure this is working as we expect. Yeah, does the same thing with punctuation this time. Good job, greeter. All right. Now the thing to know here is if we said, okay, so oops, greeter two. We want him to say um, howdy. Why not? Right. So now greeter two. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Say hi to Jane. Okay. So what we expect to happen here is that we would get another instance of our greeter here, giving it the howdy, and we say, "Hello, John. Howdy, Jane." Right? So let's give it a try. Now it's not. 
It's just saying hello both times, which means it has the exact same instance of the greeter class for both of these. So if you take a look back here again, the default last parameter here is get shared. That means by default, you're always going to get basically a singleton. You're always going to get one instance of that class back. No matter which library you use it in, which controller you use it in, which model you use it in, which view you use it in, you will always get the exact same shared instance, which makes it very easy to do stuff like, you know, add parameters, update options, stuff like that. This is exactly how uh, the request and the response work, and most of the core classes are available as services, just for this reason here. Now, there are times, like in this case, where you want them to be different. You want to get a different instance back, right? So in Code Matter 3, we would have said uh, this load, oops, load library and give it the library name, okay? And it would give us back always the same instance. We didn't have an option. So now with services, it gives you the option to get a non-shared instance. In this case, false. I do not want it to be. Um, I do not want it to be a shared instance. I want it to be a brand new instance. So now we should get... There we go. Hello, John. Howdy, Jane. Now we have two separate instances of that, right? So in most of the cases, you were going to want to use it without the without the fault. So you're going to want to use it to get back a shared instance. I would say in like 90% of the cases, that's what you're going to want. But for those times when you don't, you've got it here. Uh, one perfect example that I use in projects that I've played around with have been um, library, template libraries or theme library. And that will use a new instance of the view library passing at a location for where my themes are expected to be found. And so that way I keep that separate from the other view class, which can still do its normal job, right? Okay, so this is all great and all. When would you use this? Obviously, anything that has a lot of setup is a perfect option for this. Um, anything that you think you want to, might want to be able to swap out down the road. Because that's one of the great things here. If we look at, this is uh, under system config services. This is the base one that all of Code Manager's core classes come from, right? So the first one we got here is the cache. And that gives our cache factory, it, it returns an instance of the current cache that we're supposed to be using. Let's say we wanted to completely overwrite the cache engine and we wanted to integrate a third party. Uh, another instance of this would be the view library. Let's say we want to use um, Smarty or, or one of the other template engines, right? So what you could do in that case, you could come down here. Oh, whoops, not view cell. Oh, that's right, it's called render, silly me. Pager render. Uh, so you come down here, and instead of returning a copy of Code and Matter View, well, first thing you would do, if you're overriding a core functionality, you make a copy of that, bring it up into your config file. There we go. Bring it up into your config file, and that way you can do whatever you want with. And any service that has the same name as one in the core core services file. The one in the app services file will overwrite that. It will always be a call instead of the services, making it easy for you to overwrite this, right? So let's say you want to use Smarty or Twig or, or something else. Instead of returning code and view here, you might return Smarty uh, and do any setup that you need to do here, including grabbing configuration, telling you all that kind of stuff, right? And so that way, any place where you call the view helper, you'll be using Smarty instead. And you may have to do a couple things to tweak it, but that allows you to easily insert the code you want to do and override core system functionality. You can easily replace 90% of the framework by overriding all of these with your own classes. So if you ever need to tweak one thing, you can make a new class that extends the other class, override that one method, and then come here, copy it over, Make sure you use your class there. Um, so, so that's that's the core functionality. If you need to, over, I mean, that's when you would use services. Is if you need to overwrite core functionality, or if you have something with a lot of setup. Those are two pr perfect options for it. Um, there's probably a few other instances, but those are the, the vast majority of times I'm going to use it. I'm trying to think of any other times when I would. Anything you want to be available in multiple places, but you always want to share an instance. 
obviously this is also another perfect example um, allowing you to not necessarily depend on passing it around um, although for explicitness sake you may still want to you know in your controller grab the greeter if you've got a new class that requires that greeter as a dependency you know you, you might say uh, class equals new class and pass the greeter in that way it has the same instance and it's all very explicit you can see what it's doing but you don't have to so depending on your coding style which your company prefers you can simply use a service to get it one thing that you might be thinking now is hey but wait a minute what about testing you know if i use a service within a model i can't test it now well the services class provides actually we'll just leave that there for the fun of it the services class provides a new uh, or, or the ability to inject a mock of a class so let's say you're writing a test pretend this is a test with me just imagine this is a test class here so that we don't have to go write a new class and all that's for, for you and keep you here forever. So pretend that this is a new test. This class here is a mock, oh, we'll just call it that, uh, a mock group, okay, that we have created and we want to be able to insert that into our tests uh, to be used anywhere with our tests. So what we can do, so there we go, we've created a new class. Let's redo that for the fun of it. So we've created a new class, right? So now what we can do is we can take our services, config slash services, and we can do inject mock. Give it the name. Give it the class. So give it the class. Now anytime within your tests that that class is called, whether it's in a library model, controller, wherever, it'll use that mock one, and then you can grab that and you can test it. So you're still testable by using services. Um, you, the great thing about it is, is you can look back and go, hey, this is exactly how this class is created. This is for exactly the parameters that are given to this class. So there's no confusion on, on where it comes from. There's no confusion on which, if there's multiple ones in your system, which one is used, uh, on if you're overriding, on what is passed into it. It's all very clear and it's right there waiting for you, right? So hopefully, that clears up services. They're a very basic thing, but make it very convenient to work with a lot of uh, shared functionality and of course to override core functionality for the framework. Hope that, got, hope that was helpful, everybody. Um, I will be back soon with another video for you guys. Until then, keep coding. See you on the forums.